I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for it. <laughs> 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 Launch control. 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Flathawk. 707 horsepower and 645 pound-feet of torque. Hellcat engine. Yeah. Holy crap! Finally. This is amazing. Supercharged V8. Straight from a Hellcat, basically. Best SUV. Perhaps. Maybe. Maybe. Definitely. Perhaps. Probably. Yes. Let's get started. But before we actually get started, Yuri just got married. Check that out. I'm a married man now. And we're gonna pull over because in addition to Yuri's wedding gift, I got Yuri another gift. Uh-oh. I couldn't actually buy him what I actually wanted to. I wanted to buy you a full-size version, but at this point, I couldn't afford it. So oh. I got you a model Prowler. Yo, look at this. <laughs> That's awesome. This is on sale from the 90s? No, I drove three hours to pick that up because one guy had it in, like, next to Sarnia. You know, they have this at Panther Hobbies in, like, oh. Dixie and Dundas. Well, I looked on Kijiji. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> there it was go. actually so sick. Okay. I've been meaning to get one of these. I figured. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. And put a Hellcat engine in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, back to some full sense. Oh, that's actually so sick. <laughs> back to the car. This is the same level of craziness as the E63S wagon in terms of launches. Yes. Like insane. This is just mind blowing launches. This is so friggin' fast. Yeah. Faster than the Range Rover SVR. Oh yeah, like a full second. So much more aggressive, but this does have a totally different sound than the Range Rover SVR. Yes, and the Durango, which also has a different engine. It has a 6.4 liter, this has a 6.2 liter. And that was naturally aspirated, this is supercharged. Yeah, and you can hear that whine. My biggest complaint about that Range Rover SVR was that I couldn't hear the supercharger. Wee. This solves my problem. Wee. That's what it sounds like all the damn time. However, I have a minor complaint. You can't really hear it without the windows being down. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because it's fairly quiet in here, which is nice. Can you fix that with an intake? Yes, you can. <laughs> but that exhaust though, yeah. that, is, that is amazing. Lightning strikes every time you upshift at full RPM. Yeah, this has the same ZF transmission as all those other monster cars. My favorite thing, blasting this in the middle of the night and probably waking up everyone in the neighborhood. Yeah, and my favorite thing is blasting it through tunnels. In case you're looking for a time, this does zero to 100 in about three and a half to 3.7 seconds. And we do have performance pages that let you keep track of everything, which is the best thing that Dodge does that like pretty much no one else does. Keep track hawk of everything? <laughs> okay, yeah. And by Dodge, I mean Jeep because this is pretty much the exact same thing as a Durango on the interior. We'll just call it FCA. Okay. Fiat Chrysler of America, which doesn't include Jeep or Dodge in the name. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. The whole point of this car, the whole purpose as to why it exists, is launch control. And why did they even make it? They just decided, let's put Hellcat engines and stuff and people are going to like it? Yeah. This shouldn't exist, but I love the fact that it does. Well, I mean, they started with those like old SRT8 Jeeps back in the day and people were loving those. I love them. Weren't those faster than some Corvettes at the time? At the time, they were quite fast, yeah. So I guess Jeep kind of has to keep making cool stuff. Exactly, and this is like next level cool. Maybe the Jeep Demon will come. Yo, I want the Hellcat Fiat. Yeah, that would be insane. That's what I want. I keep saying I want a V8 Miata, a Hellcat Fiat. And we'll do a little bit of a send on cliche. It does handle quite well and we are in track mode, however, as soon as you put it in track mode, it turns off the stability control. So I have to manually press that because I don't want to take this thing sideways on public roads. I have not turned the traction control back on after going to the track mode because it's all wheel drive and it feels very stable. But on launches, you feel it getting a little squirrely, which is awesome. Exactly. And this will probably oversteer if you really send it into cliche because it is all wheel drive, like you said, but it's rear biased. So it will definitely oversteer. <laughs> all right, let's come to a stop and talk about launch control because there's some finicky things I want to deal with. Okay. First of all, we will stop and we'll hit the launch button, which is the best button I've ever seen because that's a drag racing Christmas tree. Okay, and now let's keep it in drive because we have issues with the paddle. So let's just do a drive one. Okay, here we go. And Full brake pressure. Low RPM, go. Oh, so violent. Oh. Love it. Okay. Let's address how that worked. That's the perfect way to launch it. Around 2,000 RPM in launch control, you can adjust up to 3,500. What happens if you adjust it to 3,500, Yuri? One of our subscribers and Patreon fans, Dave, he's got a track hawk. He told me yesterday, if you put it to full RPM, the brakes can't hold it back. And we tried that, 
And it's true. Okay, let's just do that right now. Okay, here we go. We're gonna stop again. We're gonna go to our race options and we're going to increase it all the way to 3,500 RPM. Launch, I'm gonna do full brake pressure, full and, and it's doing a burnout. <laughs> it just, it can't hold itself back. It has that much power. Which is super awesome because it's better than them limiting it so much that it'll never move forward. Exactly, so if they even dialed it back like 100 or 200 or 500 RPM, it probably would have been fine, but like, Full RPM, can't handle it, love it. And people would complain, it's like, I wanna launch higher. It's like, all right, try it. Yeah. I can't launch higher, perfect. The next thing I wanna talk about with launching is our shifting in manual mode. Yeah, so we screwed that up a couple times and that's the first time that's happened in the hundreds of cars that we've reviewed. Okay, we know how paddles work, we know how gauges work, we know when to shift, but this one we couldn't get right. So there's laggy gauges. We but think. The yeah, the transmission is good, it's we do like it. Amazing. But the combination of this transmission with these slightly laggy gauges does not work. Yeah, but we don't know if they're slightly laggy or if there's something tricking our head with the digital digitalness of it because they're not analog. Maybe. There's something going on that's not a pure connection between us and driving a car with paddles and launching, where we're usually pretty good at it. So what happens is you try and upshift when you normally think you should upshift, but this thing bogs down because you didn't upshift fast enough. Yes, and we do have shift lights, and we can adjust the shift light RPM setup when we're stopped. Factory is everything at 6,000 RPM, so by the time it flashes red, it's too late. Too late. Yep. So here, come to a stop, let me see what my settings are. So here's how I set it up. 4,000, 5,000, 525, 550, 6,000. That is just about perfect. I think it works well. Can you test that out for me and see how well it works? When you see the red flash, shift up. and Let's see if you bog down. Okay, here we go. Manual and send. Red, red. It's perfect. You nailed little, it. I think third to fourth could have been a little later. A little bit, but you, I, I'm fine with the way you set it up. If you have a Jeep Trackhawk, let us know what you set yours up to. Let, you know, let us know if you use the shift lights. Yeah. I let us know if you have the trouble shifting like we did. Yeah, I think that's super great that they let you customize it like that, but I think factory should be slightly different. Maybe, I don't know, they should, yeah. there should be a YouTube video telling you how it works. But that brings me to my next point, is this is one of the best auto shifting, auto transmissions if you leave it in auto. Yeah. Like amazing. Like, it knows when you want to downshift, you don't need to use the paddles. This is perfect in auto. Yeah, and especially in track mode, yeah. We've pretty much exclusively lived in. Yeah, you floor it and it'll like, if you're all the way down, it'll go all the way to six and then Bah! And if yeah. you don't, it'll just if you're just taking it easy. It is straight up violent. But to put the speed back into perspective, this launch is harder than that McLaren 570S that we had. Yeah, yeah. Which is insane. I mean, Savage Geese did some comparisons on his Jeep Trackhawk video. Yeah. Watch that. He also had a McLaren too. Yeah. It's so insane. Watch Savage Geese's video on the Jeep Trackhawk as well, because he goes into detail on some other stuff too. Like underneath this thing, which we yeah, haven't yeah. looked we at. We don't put stuff on hoist. That's we, gimmick yeah. infringement. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of gimmick infringement, oh, visor yeah. test. We did it in the live stream. You got a notification squad so you can catch those. Three, two, one. We already knew it would pass. Which is awesome. It is actually. It fits a small cup of Tim Hortons coffee, but just barely in the front cup holder, in the back cup holder, like even less, just barely. Just barely. And what else does it fit? How many boxes? 13 and 14. FC Pops and Donnie. Oh, button's over here. It's kind of slow. It gives you time to go to Patreon. 14, that was pretty good. Thank you for the Patreon box, guys. Yeah, and shout out to Sterling Taylor for that live stream donation. <laughs> that was actually amazing. Oh look, we're at Cliche Corner again. This compared to the Range Rover SVR handling-wise. It's very close. I don't know if I can pick a winner for handling. I honestly don't. Ooh. Yeah, I think it's just a toss up. This doesn't have air suspension, so it probably handles better on a track, but who knows, we're not on a track. And that also brings me to my next point. I'll talk about suspension after, but the name Trackhawk, I don't like it. You don't like it? No, man, Hellcat? Hellcat is the best name ever. This doesn't need a track. No one's taking this to the track. Maybe one or two people. But think of it this way. Trailhawk, Trackhawk. I get that. It's but perfect. It probably is, but imagine if this was like Hellhawk or like, like Demon Slayer, like. Demonhawk or Hellhawk? Okay, yeah, yeah, Hellhawk. Like, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. They... That's what I'm saying. But it is better than SRT8. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Hellhawk, yeah. next year. There we go. We will take our commission check. Just send it to the straightpipescompany.co.ca. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll talk about suspension when you drive. I think it's your turn to experience this beast of a Hellhawk. I'm gonna yeah. call it that now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's about the exact noise it makes. <laughs> Isn't this the car 
probably one of the most that you check the rear view mirror in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, you check your rear view because you want to make sure there's no uh, cops behind you. That's right, because you're always at the limit. The speed limit. Okay, this is one of the <laughs> hardest cars for me to drive because I'm always driving it way too aggressively. Yes, you have to. When you have a sleeper, you're just like, hey, buddy, guess what? Bam! Yeah, Mustang, yeah. bam! Regular Jeep, bam! Anything else, bam! Corvette, bam! But this is kind of a sleeper. It's totally a sleeper. Let's start with the color then. Okay. Looks wise. Sleeper red, not bright fire engine red. But when the light hits it perfectly, it's amazing. Because it's got a metallic flake in it. This is an extra $100 paint. I'd rather get a flashy red. Yeah, so would I. We've got a cool body kit everywhere. Yeah, but it's pretty much just the SRT kit. Yeah, but whatever. No, it's not whatever. You know how much extra this is over the SRT? $40,000. Yo, just uh, attach some of those yellow bumper red things at the bottom <laughs> so you don't scrape like everyone's been doing. Yeah, that's true. That'd if be... you're one of those people, get rid of those no, damn. No, I'm down no, with that. come on. I, I like accidental cool styling. That's gonna uh, go down in history as like a, we accidentally put it and everyone loved it, like whatever. I'm, I'm pretty sure Ralph Gilles himself has told people to take it off. He's like, I don't get it. <laughs> Whatever, I think it's cool. The only thing that really makes this thing look different is the supercharged badge. Yes, that's it. It's on the side under the Grand Cherokee logo, and then you have the Trackhawk badge behind it in the back. And when you start up your gauges, it says supercharged. It doesn't say Trackhawk or anything. Yeah, and then we have Trackhawk and our mats and supercharged, and that's about it. On the outside, it's kind of plain, not plain, but SRT yeah. plain. We've got the cool headlights and the cool taillights, really cool headlights. Yeah. Looks wise, I think it looks fantastic, but we do have the yellow Brembos. Yeah, which also the SRT gets though. That's what I'm saying. But like, that's kind of cool. It's sleeper. This is like kind of a sleepery car. It is. It definitely is. People don't expect a Jeep to be faster than McLaren. <laughs> I do think this is one of the like the best looking Jeeps though. It is. Like for one sure. of the best looking SUVs. Like the body lines, everything, the dimensions. It's yeah. so perfect. Yeah, you get like a bunch of badges and stuff like that. But there's eight different types of Grand Cherokees that you can get. And this is the most expensive one. Eight. The, the best one. <laughs> yeah. I like this way more than the Durango SRT. Oh, so do I. Even though the Durango and SRT and this are pretty much the same inside. Very similar, very, very similar. Pretty much exactly the same, except this has two rows, that has three. Yeah, okay. We've got TVs on the back. Yeah, that's an option. We'll Red interior. It. Yeah, I love it. The seats are super comfortable. They are, especially for a long road trip, as I will find out, insert clips right here. <laughs> and they are red, so I'm a sucker for red. These are the optional seats. You gotta pay extra, I think you should. We've got carbon fiber. Yeah, we do, I love it. We've got a cool material right here, I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's kind of like this metal-y thing, but not metal, it's, whatever it is, it's good. And we've got a normal shifter, down for up, up for down, that's great, but like, keep it in auto, I think. Yeah, for sure, and this doesn't blind me like the Durango SRT bright red shifter thing did. Yeah, yeah, they're a little less bright. Back seat room. Backseat room is not that good. The Durango had way better backseat room for me. But if you're not as tall as six foot one and a half me, if you're as tall as Yuri, five foot eight and a half, you'll be just fine. If you're a cool parent and you want to drive your kids around in an SUV, this you'll is be, like yeah. the coolest. The coolest. We do have our 12 rewinding satellite radio stations. We do have the buttons behind the steering wheel for changing your radios and volume. And the tiny paddles. And the tiny paddles. It's exactly the same as our Durango SRT pretty much. Yeah. Watch that review for more interior stuff. Yeah, but we do have a Trackhawk badge on the steering wheel. <laughs> yeah, the Trackhawk badge, everything about the steering wheel looks, everything inside here is very nice. It is very nice, like they, very, very nice. They didn't screw anything up except for that the infotainment's kind of laggy and the gauges we don't like. Yeah, that's and they're it. also a little bit laggy. It's just if they solve the lag, that's yeah. pretty much it. Mercedes, there's no issues. Remember we drove the big SUV on the track? Yeah. Which one was that? I think it was a GLE 63. Do we have any issues shifting at all that time? No, we didn't. I know, I know. Dodge! <laughs> just the lag, something. <laughs> something. But I'm sure you guys will figure it out. This yeah. is great so yeah. far. I would like to talk about the different modes. We have tow, snow, auto, sport, and track. I think being able to switch the modes like this is so fantastic. I love it, it's perfect. Keep it on track unless you're on the highway, then switch it to auto and your RPMs go lower and it's perfect. Yeah, or you hit custom and then set up your custom controls and that's the way I like it. I find track mode too stiff for the road because it's obviously called track mode. I don't find it too stiff. I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm sure you do, but. but I never like soft suspension. I always like stiff suspension. Yes, that's true. But I like stiff suspension on the track. So I appreciate them having that because it is adaptive suspension. And if you put it in tow mode, you can actually tow up to 7,200 pounds which is a lot. But that's not why you buy this. No, that's but the maybe you That's do. the excuse for buying this. To your wife for, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's not why you buy this. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why they didn't put stupid names on it so that like you can't get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't should, suspect it. They should have called it the Towhawk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Towhawk. <laughs> the Towhawk. <laughs> honey, we're going to buy a Towhawk. We're going to tow, tow the boat to the cottage. Oh, that's a great idea, honey. $100,000. 700 horsepower. 
Okay, uh, there's a couple other things I want to mention that I forgot to mention about the Durango SRT. What's that, number one? Every single FCA truck, car, shows every single number in the gauge. Yes, they do, the when speedometer you, keeps up. When you rip it, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, <laughs> no matter how fast you're ripping through it, yeah. it'll try to show every single one and show them. It is very good at that. And if you're looking at the gauges right now, what kind of gas mileage are we getting, Yuri? <laughs> oh my God, uh, let me just yeah. cycle my way through this lagzilla. I would just like to confirm that we are getting gas mileage. Gas mileage is happening. 25.2 liters per 100 kilometers. Which is not very good, but it's to be expected. And what's that other thing you've been obsessing about lately? Grocery bag hangers in the trunk. Yes, that's right. This has four of them. <laughs> you need them. They're so convenient. Like if you ever use them, they're little things that pop up. My Honda Element has two of them. I didn't even realize until like two years in. I feel like you need to use tie down straps in this more than grocery bag hooks because no, this is so fast. But in general, anything with grocery bag hangers is fantastic. Like try using them if you have them That's and true. you haven't used them before. It just keeps them from like moving around and stuff like that. It's yeah. so good. Pro tips from Yuri. Yeah, groceries, bro. This is the ultimate grocery getter. <laughs> like ultimate. I feel like that's been like the cliche thing every single person has said about this car. Yes, except the E63 S wagon, which I think I would still take over this. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I would still take that over this. I like wagons more than SUVs. Yeah. I mean, this thing you take off road and stuff because it would still do well off road, but that E63 S wagon, man. Uh, there's no off road button, dude. I don't even think this thing will go off road. I think it can. For sure. Like Range Rovers, they still have off road buttons in the SVR. This is just like, nah. We did take the Range Rover off road and it barely did work, yeah, but it exactly. worked. I don't know, man. I wouldn't take this off-road. I wouldn't trust it. I would. Overall, do you like the look of this thing? Oh, yeah. I think it's very good looking. I don't know if it's as good as the Range Rover SVR. I think they're on the exact same level. I would agree. The SVR is a little bit more expensive, but yeah, in terms of looks, I would agree with you. Like the exact same. Yeah. Just opposite. Yeah. It's just kind of what your preference. You want this like luxury beast thing or you want this actual beast thing with some luxury in it it's like chevy and ford have the rivalry of this stuff and then jeep goes out and like picks a fight with range rover yeah yeah like all right you know what <laughs> we're gonna make the fastest suv in the world for a bit you <laughs> the british yeah you're going down and i guess we should get to the price because it's a lot of money obviously how much as i said it's forty thousand dollars more than the srt this starts at one hundred and ten thousand dollars and we're sitting in we are sitting in one for one hundred and thirty thousand dollars canadian how much was a Range Rover SVR? Uh, about 150 as it was options, but it starts at about 132. To be honest, I think it's a fair comparison. Like Range Rover is a little more high end than Jeep. Yeah. So for the price, it's fair for the performance, I think. But this is, like I said in the previous Grand Cherokee video, this is the American Range Rover. Yeah, so the premium for the Range Rover makes perfect sense. It does. But if you just want to be that guy with the 700 horsepower Jeep, like I do not fault you at all. And I would probably take this one over that one. I think I would take the Range Rover SVR just because I had more fun with the paddles. It was easier for me to use. And because it's, it was a little bit slower, so you could use the paddles. And it still had the rewinding satellite radio stations. I didn't need to click the replay button every time to get to it, which, even though it had less stations. And I think I like the sound of the Range Rover SVR more than this. Yeah, I'm kind of split between them. I like the exhaust sound better on that, but I love the supercharger sound on this. Yeah. So let us know which one you guys would pick, the Range Rover SVR or this. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, patreon.com slash the straight pipes and the YouTube join member button. Yeah, and let us know what you want us to review in terms of Hellcats, because we want to drive more Hellcats. Yeah, yeah, Demons. Demons, Red Hellcat, Eye. Red Eyes. What I want to drive... My ultimate one would be a Hellcat wide body manual. Yo, I'm down. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. This is a subscription break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that. <laughs>